If you're working on an iMac with a Retina 5K screen like this late 2017 model right here, and if you're also working in Premiere, you might have noticed that your colors, what you see in Premiere, is much more saturated, much more contrasty than what you see in your exported MP4 file that you exported to upload on YouTube or something like that. This issue is what this video is all about. So today I'm going to address an issue which I have wrestled since around summer last year, 2019, which was when I started doing videos for YouTube. And first off, I'm posting a few links in the description of this video to articles and blog posts that help me figuring out what this issue is. And a disclaimer is that this video will only apply to a certain setup of hardware and software, namely working in Adobe Premiere on an iMac with a Retina 5K display. And another important thing is that the purpose of this solution I will present in this video is for making videos for online publishing like YouTube. I cannot speak for everyone who is making videos for broadcasting, television, cinema, whatever. That's not applicable for what I do, so I haven't really learned all that stuff. And also sometimes I do shorter videos for clients and in most cases what normal people use in their office is an sRGB screen. So why are the colors I see in Premiere different from what I see in my exported mp4 file? I have seen this question here and there in forums, Facebook, etc. So I thought I would share some sources of information and also my solution to this problem which is not super cheap and easy, but it is a solution. So if you're working in Premiere on an iMac 5K Retina, I'm guessing that you feel that you cannot really trust what you see in Premiere when you compare it to uh, your end result that you play in VLC player, for example. And this is exactly what I started noticing as well. I simply could not trust what I saw in Premiere when I did color correction. Um, adjusted highlights, shadows, white balance, and so on, because the result, my exported MP4 file, looks so much different. So before 2018, Adobe Premiere had not been color managed, like, for example, Photoshop. An update was released in October 2018, where they added the functionality to select color management in the settings of Premiere. This makes the color accuracy okay when working on a Retina 5K display. I mean, it's better, but it's not great because the problem is that the timeline in Adobe Premiere, according to my research, is always Rec. 709 or BT 709, if you will. And the display on an iMac Retina 5K, for example, the late 2017 model like I have, has a P3 wide gamut display. And according to this article, which I link in the description below, setting your IMAX color profile to sRGB will not emulate sRGB correctly. I cannot confirm this for sure, but it seems like this is the case. So when all these factors are mixed together, the result is that you will see oversaturated colors and two dark blacks on your program display in Premiere. So, does the color management in Adobe Premiere help fix this issue? I'm repeating once again that my purpose here is to be able to trust what I see in Premiere when I do color correction and grading for YouTube videos. That's important to remember. So if we take a look at this table here, which I borrowed from PremierePro.net, uh, we can see a few different cases of settings and what the result of those settings are. And this information, by the way, comes from Lars Borg, who is a principal scientist and color engineer in digital video at Adobe. So I would say it's probably the most trustworthy source of information you can get in this matter. And I have actually been in contact with Lars personally to ask him about my specific setup and what the best settings are for what I do. But I'll get back to that in a minute. 
Since the timeline in Premiere is always Rec 709, this value is the same in all of these cases. So what happens when I activate color management and my display can properly show Rec 709? The result is okay, but it's not needed. And on the second row here, we can see that um, on a P3 display, the colors will look too saturated. But if we turn on color management, it will look okay. And the last example here is with an sRGB display, which is probably what most YouTuber, YouTube viewers see. Uh, and therefore, this is the thing that is most interesting to me when I make YouTube videos or deliver video to a client who is going to use it online. So what would be the best solution here? A few months ago, I visited a professional colorist here in Sweden, and I also discussed details about this issue with another colorist in England, and they both recommended me to get an external screen with an external video card. So I bought myself an HP Dreamcolor Z27XG2 Studio Monitor. It's this one right here. Uh, this is the second generation of this monitor, which has built-in hardware, hardware calibration. Costs about $2,700, so it's kind of pricey. But I know that a cheaper option will usually result in that I'm not very satisfied for, for that long. So, um, I mean, you can get away with much cheaper displays as well to solve this problem, but this is what I went for. And the recommendations I got from the colorists I spoke to was that I should also get a video card like the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Monitor. So I did. The problem with this gadget is that it only has a Thunderbolt 2 port and my iMac here has a Thunderbolt 3 port. So I also needed an adapter and uh, looks like this. And uh, the setup I tried at first looks like this. But getting this stuff to work was not really what I had expected because the HP screen is only active when the video card is sending some kind of video input signal, which is when you play something on your timeline in Premiere or After Effects or whatever you use. Otherwise, the screen goes black. I mean, you can change the settings for the Ultra Studio Mini Monitor to show a freeze frame if you want to. Um, but the thing was also that I experienced pretty much lag. It was unresponsive sometimes, so on. Uh, and there are also quite a lot of settings you need to change in both Premiere or After Effects or whatever, and also the, the settings for the Ultra Studio Mini Monitor. So this was not very intuitive. I mean, it's not plug and play. So I basically had to follow the manual step by step to get this thing to work at all because I had no experience of this whatsoever. So it took quite some time to get it right. But the thing with the screen going black and the fact that I could not use the HP display for anything else than a reference monitor sort of made me a bit hesitant about this whole Ultra Studio Mini Monitor setup. So what I did next was that I disconnected the Ultra Studio Mini Monitor and connected the HP display directly to my iMac with a USB-C cable. Then of course it works like any external screen. It's extending the desktop just like you would expect. And uh, I also continued reading, Googling, searching to find out if maybe this setup could work as well. And it was in this process that I found uh, Lars Borg at Adobe and I also found his email address. So I wrote him an email and I asked, what is the best solution here in my specific case with my hardware? And as it turns out, he actually uses an HP Dreamcolor display for his Mac as well. So this is what he answered. I also use Dreamcolor with my Mac, no extra hardware is needed, connected to the HDMI port. In Photoshop, drag and open image to the new display. It's color managed. 
in Premiere and After Effects, go to Preferences, Playback, check the box for your display, Enable Transmit. For displays other than sRGB or 709, in Preferences, General, turn on Display Color Management. If delivering YouTube videos, set display to sRGB and turn off display color management. If you use Blackmagic Design or AJA hardware, the process is different as the hardware doesn't communicate color spaces. Consult their documentation. So with that said, I feel pretty comfortable that my current setup without the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Monitor is perfectly fine for what I'm doing, which is making videos for YouTube and web use. So the HP monitor is connected to my iMac with a USB-C cable and I have no additional hardware. And an important detail is also that for this particular setup, I have the color management in Premiere turned off like Losh recommended. And depending on your specific setup, like I showed earlier, the best solution for you might be to turn it on. It all depends on your purpose and what kind of hardware you are working on. That's about it for this video. And if you are in the same situation as I was a couple of months ago when I started this journey, I hope you find this information useful. I also really encourage you to check the links in the description below because they contain a lot more detailed information than what I have shown here. So if you liked this video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you another time.